I read this article about how you can optimize your phone for productivity, and it really matched my ethos of me supposed to use my phone as a tool instead of my phone using me. And over time, I've pretty much kept that up. My phone is a tool, a thing that I use to make my life easier without taking over my life. And today I wanted to make a video going over that, the original article being linked in the description, and just going through how my phone's structured and the things I do to make sure my phone usage is mindful usage. Uh, hey internet, my name is Mark. If you don't know me already, uh, I'm a software engineer and I guess I make productivity videos from time to time. I make videos from time to time based on my current schedule. and. I'm in my, my, my room. This is the last video I'll be making in this room, which is a little nostalgic, but anyhow, this is a video I've had on my list for a while and I'm glad I'm finally getting around to it. There was a while ago where uh, I, I had a, a, an Android phone at the time and I thought, I kinda wanna downgrade to, I think at the time I was thinking of the Nokia Flip. It had Spotify, it had Google Maps, and that's really all I needed it for, right? But then there's the argument of why not just delete all the apps from your phone and use it that way? Why get rid of all these features that a phone's supposed to have? And at the end of the day, it's because my phone was distracting me, and I think without regulation, it would continue to distract me. The downgrade is pointless because we have control over these phones and we can set it up so that we remain in control. It just takes a little bit. So today uh, we're just gonna walk through what I have set up on my phone. Nice and easy video. Hopefully this can uh, help you out. A lot of the things come down to a bit of minimalist philosophy, a bit of do I really need this on my phone? <laughs> How can I best use my phone as a tool? As something to stay in touch but not, you know, totally taking over. Now, the article, as I'll link to in the description down below, it goes over the order of things in a pretty specific way, and so I think it's definitely worth the read. But I'm structuring the following, I guess, walkthrough in a bit of a particular fashion. So I'm going to start off with a few just general things. Quick. Uh, methodology behind how my apps are organized, and then the do not disturb mode and how I guess I, I use that. So the first thing is that I want my phone to help me, right? I want to make sure that my phone is something that I guess has a little extra benefit to it. You don't need to make everything in your life productive, but it is something that can force you to do things like learning a language. So the first thing we'll see is Google Photos, Google Calendar. Those apps are in Japanese. If I go ahead and open, not Google Maps because that shows where I am, Let's see, AccuWeather, we'll go to Park Slope. We'll see that everything's in Japanese. And by default, everything is in Japanese. That includes settings. Uh, and this is just helpful to read things in Japanese. I had my phone in French for a while and Brazilian Portuguese for a little bit. Um, but it just gets you used to seeing the language if you're trying to learn one. Another thing is quick access to camera and flashlight. I see camera on my taskbar here. You can access the, both of those things from the lock screen. <clears throat> if I swipe down, aside from the fact I'm recording, uh, flashlight and camera are also right there. I think fast access to these things is important because you know everyone uses their phone as a camera these days. The last quick thing here is screen reader mode, which all right, so as unfortunate as I, okay, cool. Ancient Fortress article, boom, screen reader mode. Uh, it cuts out ads sometimes and it removes distractions from the web page that I think is super cool. It does this by default, set up on my phone. The article below will, will explain how to do it. I think it's a small thing, but makes a big impact, especially navigating websites when all you want to do is read the content. Uh, app organization. Now, why are my apps organized like they are? Why am I missing one on the bottom corner, even though it really bugs me? And why are there folders on my second screen, but only one app inside? So they're split up into two things here. Effectively, the apps I think I'll need either at a moment's notice or the things I want to be mindful of using. I might need Spotify last minute or I might want to remind myself constantly to do Japanese verb and adjective practice. At the end of the day, sure, I wanted to downgrade my phone, but it's so useful to have an app that can help me practice Japanese conjugations and track my, my intake calories and whatnot. I, sh I do want the phone to be able to use those things. It's just making sure I don't download too many apps that I'm not gonna use. But at the end of the day, the home screen is organized uh, in alphabetical order, first of all. The only reason why Card Manager is at the end is so I can just easily tap it with my right thumb. But it's in alphabetical order. Uh, to settings is where settings would be if it was in English. It's a very straightforward way of organizing. There's no disputes as to how blue something is. Uh, and organizing by color kind of annoyed me that way. But these are things that I use probably daily. In theory, you don't want more than three or four rows of apps. Uh, so I could probably go with removing a few, I suppose. That's for another time. Now, here's the second page. In classic minimalist philosophy, I guess, the idea here is that you only you have apps that you're going to use. So once again, this is organized alphabetically, removes all dispute. If I have apps, I want to 
make sure I use them consistently or have a reason for them being there. Apartment and insurance information, relatively straightforward. Billing, you know, I'm gonna use these apps. These are things that are great to have at a moment's notice. Some people have a social media folder. Uh, I have a messaging folder here. The first one is Gmail, because I probably check email too often, but that's the more productive one, I suppose. And if we scroll over, I have Discord, which I found back and forth on whether I need it on my phone or not. WhatsApp important, Reddit, probably shouldn't be on there. I don't use ProtonMail that much, but Reddit, you know, it probably shouldn't be there. That's that's it. That's the end of the story. <laughs> the top left has the time tracking thing because I like to just remind myself of how much time I've spent on my phone. Reddit, six minutes. Okay, that's just today, but um, an hour, 25. Discord for 25 minutes. Firefox, focus for 12 minutes. Um, back even further. Um, Google Maps, 23 minutes. So I have like an hour to two hours on my phone every day. Peacock, I watch TV on my phone. One of those things that, that's not in the folder because it's not gonna be staying on my phone for very long. Messaging, we went through that. Tech, geocaching. I don't actually have an Alexa anymore. I had the dot for a little bit and I wanted to do something with it, but I don't see myself doing much with that. So goodbye. And then the, the wow, okay. <laughs> Uh, and then Epoch Cam, I can see myself using that for streaming, so boom, tech stays, utilities, beautifulness is kind of nice sometimes. I'll have to see if Citizen has something for Seattle, work, yeah, that checks out, yeah, and travel. And then, just lastly, the dock are things that I want to prioritize. So again, camera, we have toggle track to log my time. Uh, if I sit down for Japanese stuff, I want to be able to just hit play and then, you know, do the details later. I want to get myself to use this app more for Japanese and then to do this, my one and only. That's the philosophy of the app organization. I think the first thing I ended up doing was going through and just deleting any apps that I knew I wasn't going to use. If you're not going to use it in the next 30 days or, and or, you haven't used it in the last 90 days, go ahead and yeet it out. Now, let's talk about do not disturb and notifications. So generally, I have notifications off all the time on my phone. If we go into settings here, oh yeah, I don't know if this is important, but I have these specifically set up to calendar, to doist, battery life, pictures, um, like budget stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, a little motivational quote, whatever that is, today's Japanese news. I don't use that ever. Um, way over budget because of all the moving expenses. But anyway, if we go to settings, this is detailed much more in the article, again, that I'm linking below. Uh, but pretty much your phone has these modes of do not disturb, personal, sleep, work, uh, and the top is just do not disturb. Uh, and they're super helpful. And I think it's important to spend some time to set them up pretty much. If I go to um, the do not disturb settings, if I go to Oyasumi Mid, a uh, uh, night mode modal. Um, I have a set of people here on the left who whose calls and texts will come through. That's effectively family and really close friends. And then for apps, I have things that can come through. So phone can come through, to do notifications can come through. Not that it's set up for it at the moment, but way of life notifications should come through. And then otherwise, I usually put my phone into just. Get, getting rid of all notifications pretty much. And you can configure these modes as much as you want. So for example, for the bedtime mode, you can see I only have family on there that can come through. There are usually other people I, I add on there, but yeah, screen timer. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Also so worth going through this. I know for Instagram, I would get into reels and whatever. So for the best, I you know got rid of it. But it's again, this is another one worth poking through. All the apps that are allowed, and then there's a bunch of apps that aren't allowed. So the the list probably differ quite a bit, but pretty much anything that's productive, um, or I should be opening at 11 p.m. won't be blocked. It's super easy to disable this. You just say, oh, disable for 15 minutes or whatever. But you know, it's just a reminder to be like, hey man, get off your phone. Now, if we go to notifications, uh, they're all off. This These two characters under AccuWeather, for example, off, off, one password, turn it off. Go through your phone and turn all of these off. And then go through, and turn very specific ones on. I have two philosophies on notifications. One are the ones that should be urgent. So I have a way of life notification that goes off at 6 p.m. every evening to remind me to log my habits. And I have motivation things show up because they're in Japanese and so it's a little quicker reading practice there. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> I think it's important that your phone is a tool and not something uh, that's totally for pleasure. Obviously your phone 
you can have things on it for fun. You know, I don't have any games on my phone, mostly because uh, I want to be reading if I would ever be playing a game on my phone. If you're someone who plays games in your room and whatever, on your phone, you know, have the games. It's not a bad thing. I would just play games on my computer or watch TV on my computer, if at all. Which is why I don't have Netflix or anything on my phone. Peacock is temporary. I think it's important that, for me, my phone is a tool. It is something that helps make my life more productive. Not in terms of getting more work done, but being more mindful with how I do things, pretty much. Using Google Maps to get around, great. Using Spotify to listen to music, wonderful. Way of life to help me track my habits, to do is to keep me on things. Calendar to check at a moment's notice. Discord to make sure I can keep in touch with group chats or something like that, perfect. But notifications are off for all of those things because I don't want to be working on something or reading or, or seeing those notifications on my screen and thinking, oh, I gotta go check Discord or Messenger, or I gotta go check out what random song was released on Spotify. I wanna do that on my own time when it comes across my own mind. I also think the time tracking feature that now all phones have is super useful because you will not realize how much time you will spend on your phone until it's too late. Just looking at those statistics can be such a wake up call. At the end of the day, if you have notifications tailored to what you want them to be, you know, you go on, you go and you turn them all off and you only get notifications for text messages or only messenger or whatever. You get to kind of choose what invades your time. Otherwise, you, you download apps and you turn the notifications on and they'll just start notifying you. I don't think it works, to put it one way, if you have, let's say, 10 apps that all notify you and you eventually say, I don't need those, I don't need those, I don't need those. I think you should turn off all notifications and you think, oh, maybe I do need a notification for that. You know, I turn off notifications notifications for way of life and I turn off notifications for Discord. Not once have I thought, oh, I really need notifications for Discord right now. But recently I've been thinking, oh, you know, I, I've been updating way of life like the day or two days after uh, I should be. So I have a little notification set up now um, to remind me. I'm letting it, you know, into my space, into my mind, right? I don't need to know what's happening on Discord all the time. Maybe you do. Maybe you use Messenger or whatever or Instagram and you're working on social media and you need those notifications. I think it should be an opt-in system, not an opt-out, which notifications often are. They are technically opt-in because the app has to ask you for permission. But anyway, your phone is a tool and I wanted to downgrade my phone so I could have some external force restricting what I can and cannot do. But I realized that also limits what a smartphone has so much power to be these days, a notes app right off the bat, something to put a video idea into Todoist that will instantaneously update Todoist on my laptop. Something to record my vlogs on just because I don't wanna always carry around this camera. Apps and social networks are, by design, gonna keep us gripped. Algorithms know what we like, what hits those dopamine receptors. Dare I, dare I generalize dopamine as everything else does. They're designed for that. And I think we should let ourselves give into those by our own choice. Kind of like a choose your vices thing. Choose what notifications invade your space. Thing is, while I'm trying to make myself more relaxed these days or making it easier to take breaks, it's all the more important to me that when I'm on, that when I'm working, I'm working and not being distracted. It's one thing if, you know, I'm on a day off and my notifications are all on and so whenever someone texts me, even if it's not important, I can drop whatever I'm doing, right? Pause my game, pause my show and respond. But it's when I'm working, I wanna be working. And that's why I have those work modes and the sleep modes. And so only important texts will show up on my home screen. I have no notification badges on because those, A, bug the crap out of me. Uh, and B, they're just, oh, when I'm on, I want to be on. Uh, and I don't want my phone distracting me. So when I tailor my phone to that, all of a sudden it's kind of like, oh, you know, if I'm watching a TV show or playing a game, it's kind of nice not having a ding go off or being informed about a Discord channel that really isn't urgent. Turning my phone into something I use, something that's useful for me, is taking a step in the right direction. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Don't forget to stay awesome, and I will see you next week. Peace.